Hello everyone. So today we'll be discussing UPSC mains 2021 GS paper two question number six. Good question. Question which has so many dimensions and the terms which are there in this particular question, they have been asked in pre as well. So before we talk about this question per se, let's talk about some important keywords which are there in this particular question like welfare state, primary health structure. So what do you understand by welfare state? What is a welfare state? So when you're talking about welfare state, that means some responsibilities, some special responsibilities has been given to a particular state. Why these responsibilities have been given to a particular state or why a state has taken these responsibilities for improving the socioeconomic conditions of the citizen and for uh, means providing protective measures for their development. So like you can see in this particular image, there are jobless people, there are old people, elderly people, and to help these guys and to help society in general, welfare state do, do certain things and they provide certain amenities. Then we'll also try to talk about what are the demerits of a welfare state, like Scandinavian countries. They're a very good example of balancing the capitalist and socialist model. They're very good examples of applying the welfare state policies, but there are some demerits as well. And we'll try to see that. Now let's see the question which was asked earlier by UPSC on the term welfare state, and then we'll go and discuss this particular question in detail. So the ideal of welfare state in Indian constitution is enshrined in preamble, DPSP, fundamental rights, or seven schedule? The answer is, you can pause the video right now if you want to think and then unpause it. So the answer is B, DPSP, Directive Principle of State Policy. So there's Article 47. There's Article 47 in our constitution, which talks about what duty of state to improve public health. Duty of state to improve public health. Then there are so many other things. There are so many other points which are there. Article 38 is there, Article 42 is there. All these are telling that or they are enshrining the idea of welfare state. Now, before we, before I show you this, like the different DPS, we see this state to secure social, social order for the promotion of welfare of the people. Then 42 is about maternity relief. 47 is about duty of the state to improve public health. All these are tenants of welfare state. Before we talk about that, what do you understand by this particular diagram? How the welfare state begins, how the welfare state ends. If you understand this diagram, believe me, your concept of welfare state is very much clear. See what happens basically. So initially the taxpayer people, they're giving their money as taxes. Certain portion of money is taken by state as taxes. Using these taxes, direct, indirect, and other taxes, government is helping some vulnerable strata. So we do know there are some subsidies, et cetera, et cetera, which is provided. So vulnerable strata means who will come under the vulnerable strata, even unemployed, can be a vulnerable strata. In certain countries, you have unemployed or unemployment alliance. Then older elderly people, disabled people, divyang people, all these come under the vulnerable strata. So that is the basic concept. Most of the people are working, using their money as taxes, different forms of taxes. State is helping certain vulnerable strata. But now what is happening? Let's understand one thing. Let's say you are being provided an unemployment alliance. We're just talking about welfare state per se, and then we'll move on directly to the question. But you need to know this because UPSC is asking a lot of questions on these areas. So let's say you're getting an unemployment alliance and generally man by nature, what we are, we love to enjoy. We, if I tell you, you have to study for 10 hours. So that is a tedious task. You have to apply Pomodoro, et cetera, et cetera, to achieve your aim. But let's say somebody is giving you an unemployment alliance, then the tendency will be, I'm not saying in most of the people, but in some of the people, the tendency will be that even if they are getting work, they will not work because they're feeling like they're getting the unemployment alliance. So most of the people who are here, so generally what happens in some welfare state, if the people are seeing that there are certain people who are getting benefits without doing anything at all. So they will try to jump from this area where they're working and state is extracting some money from them in the form of taxes to this particular portion. To the vulnerable strata. Why would they want to work when they're getting unemployment alliance? So if this particular vulnerable strata becomes bigger than the people who are actually working, then the welfare state will end because state does not have any money to spend on this vulnerable strata. So there are certain checks and balances. So you need to, you can understand it. Like, it's not like a welfare state is a very purely positive term and everything is hunky-dory with it. There are some issues associated with welfare state as well. So now you know something about welfare state. In DPSP, the tenets of welfare state are there. So DPSP is promoting social and economic democracy and fundamental rights are promoting political democracy. All these points, you already know it, I guess. 
when you are when you have read Lakshmi Kant and all those stuff. Fine. Now let's come to the question. Now this is DPSP thirty six to fifty one. Please remember it. Like thirty six to fifty one. This is part four, which is dealing with DPSP. Then part three is fundamental rights twelve to thirty five. So remember these parts because there are so many questions which has been asked by UPSC and other PSCs on these parts. Take care. So now let's come to this particular question. This is the question which was been asked. So now we'll directly jump to this question and address the question. So besides being a moral imperative of welfare state, primary health structure is a necessary precondition for sustainable development. So how can you start this question? And there are two parts of this question. First part is PHC, moral imperative of welfare state. This is the first part. PHC, moral imperative of welfare state. First part. Then the second part is PSC necessary precondition for sustainable development. And you have to write some points, or you have to, if you want to write it in para, you can do that as well. So PSC necessary precondition for sustainable development. So here you will write some more points. Okay. Now even before you start doing that, you cannot directly jump and start writing the points. First of all, you can start with defining what is a welfare state. That means the welfare state concept enshrines special responsibilities to state for improving the socioeconomic conditions of citizens and for providing protective measures for their development. So that's it. Welfare state concept is like you, you have defined it and you have a proper introduction now. If you want to start with the introduction of primary health care structure or primary health structure, you can do that as well. You can just define what is primary health structure. So what is primary health structure? There was a Bhore committee. I will show you some notes of mine, hard copy notes. So there was a Bhore committee. They can even ask you, Bhore committee is associated with what health? And health topic is explicitly given in your GS paper too. So Bhore committee, according to Bhore committee, primary health structure is the first point of contact. First point of contact. So let's say you fall ill. So the first place you will go, or first place, point of hospitalization or if you're going to a hospital, that first point of contact is your PHC. Se second point of contact will be the part of the secondary health structure or secondary care. Then the third point of contact is tertiary care, right? So primary health structure is the first point of contact for healthcare seekers and includes preventive, promotive and curative healthcare. So there are different parts of primary health structure. One is preventive care, preventive healthcare. I'm just telling you some points. It's a 10 marker, so we can just pick and choose. Preventive, then there is preventive healthcare. We can understand that we have to take some steps. We have to follow some regime, which will prevent us from having any disease. Promotive healthcare and then curative healthcare. Curative healthcare also, we can understand that if you have some disease, you have to follow some steps so that you get cured of that disease. What is promotive healthcare? Again, what do you understand by promotive healthcare? So it is development of behaviors that improve body functions. So like exercise you're doing. So it is a promotive healthcare. You're promoting your health in some way or the other. You're doing meditation. You're calming your mind. All these are promotive healthcare. Fine. So you can start with primary health structure definition as well, that it is a first point of contact for healthcare seeker and includes preventive, promotive, and curative healthcare. Now you will jump directly to the question, the parts, the two parts, because you don't have it's not a 15 marker where you have 250 words. It's a 10 marker, 150 words. So now what you will do, the heading is PSC moral imperative of welfare state. So here you can talk about how it is a moral imperative, how a state which promotes welfare state as a concept, how PSC is enshrined in it. It's, you have to do it. It's, you cannot escape away from it. So first thing first, it leads to cost effective care for people and communities. We have written this here. You can use this point, cost effective care for people and communities. Then what happens if you don't have proper PHCs? So because of that, there's a vicious cycle of poverty. Vicious cycle of poverty if you don't have proper. Now, let me tell you one more thing. There are two kinds of cycles, vicious cycle and then virtuous cycle. Vicious cycle has a negative connotation. Virtuous cycle has a positive connotation. Vicious cycle of poverty means poverty will lead to low productivity, which will lead to low skills, which will lead to low income, which will again lead to poverty. It's a vicious cycle, negative cycle. Virtuous cycle means, let's say employment is happening. So you're spending more, industries are going more, GDP is in improving. Then this whole thing is a virtuous cycle. It will go on like this in a circular manner, positive connotation, right? So in the absence of proper 
primary health structure, primary health care, vicious cycle of poverty is created due to high out-of-pocket health expenditure. You do know it. Millions of people in India, they go below poverty line because of high OOP, out-of-pocket health expenditure. So if you have a proper PHC, then this OOP will reduce. So that's why there is NHP 2017. What is NHP 2017? National Health Policy 2017. And it has said that it advocates, like I will tell you, this is an important point you need to remember. It. Let's say government is spending 100 rupees on healthcare. So according to National Health Policy 2017, government should be spending two third or more. That means 67 or more rupees to primary care, to primary healthcare, followed by secondary and tertiary care. And if they do that, and if this whole thing, this whole thing which has been promoted by NHP 2017 that government should allocate major proportion, two third or more to primary care followed by secondary and tertiary. It proves that primary health care is a moral imperative of welfare state to reduce high OOP health expenditure. So this can be your second point. First point was it leads to cost effective care for people and communities. Second point is about the health expenditure, OOP health expenditure. Third point which you can talk about is, let me show you something. You can talk about Article 47 and 42. So there are DPSPs like Article 47, and it says that there is a, it is the duty of state to improve public health. Then you have Article 42, and Article 42 is saying that, talking about maternity relief. So all these create constitutional obligations on state to provide accessible primary health structure. So you can focus on this particular portion, right? On Article 47, you can talk about Article 47 and 42. Then one more point which you can write in the moral imperative of welfare state how it is a moral imperative of welfare state is, you will say that this whole thing, this whole PSC promotes equitable distribution of health. We have heard about equitable distribution of wealth. Now we're talking about equitable distribution of health. Equitable distribution means if your PSC is properly developed, then if I have some fever or anything and I'm from a poor strata, I can also go and my health will be taken care of. But if the PSC is not developed, the government hospitals are not well developed, you have to go to private cares, and in that case, I will be, I may not afford it. So I may not want to go to the hospital. So this is inequitable distribution of health. Whoever is richer, they're able to access the healthcare. Whoever is poorer, they're not able to access the healthcare. But if you have proper PHC, it will promote equitable distribution of health, thereby proving the fact that it is a moral imperative of welfare state because welfare state wants to promote equitable distribution of health. So all these points you can talk about in the first part that how PHC is a moral imperative of welfare state. Now, if you come to this particular portion, PHC necessary precondition for sustainable development. So what you can talk about here, you can directly talk about SDG three and do remember 17 SDG. You don't need to remember 169 targets, but do remember SDG 3. What does SDG 3 talks about? So SDG 3 is to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. And India has a mammoth role in helping world attain SDG 3 because our health indicators are not very good. And since we have a mammoth role, so global health indicators cannot improve without India making giant stride in this SDG 3, but in attaining SDG 3. And again, without proper primary health care, we will or attaining SDG three would be a very difficult task. So this would be your first point in the second part of the question that PSC is a necessary precondition for sustainable development. Then you can second point you can talk about that this whole uh, what you can say effective primary health structure would help you at achieving universal health coverage. What it will help you in achieving universal health coverage. This can be your second point: universal health coverage. Everybody gets access to healthcare, and then. Since what we are talking about, we're talking about that effective primary health structure would help achieve universal health coverage, thereby furthering the tenets of sustainable development. So again, keep on linking your answer to the question which is being asked so that examiner may feel that yes, you are not deviating from the topic. Then the third point which you can talk about in necessary precondition for sustainable development is about IMR. So you can give some data if you have. It's, again, it's very easy for me to give you data right now after the exam is done. But Generally, we have these data of infant mortality rate, maternal mortality rate. So infant mortality rate, number of deaths, infant deaths per thousand live births under one year of age, do remember it. Then there is also neonatal mortality rate, which is related to under one month of the child's birth. Then there is maternal mortality rate. So infant mortality rate, let me give you some data. In 1997, it was around 71. That means 71 child or children were dying out of 1000 live births. Then from 1997 to 2008, this data came down to 53. 
Then from 2008 to 2017, it dropped to 33. Now it is hovering around in 2021, it is hovering around 28, 29. So that means 28, 29 child are dying per thousand live births. So if we keep on improving or strengthening primary health structure would go a long way in reducing IMR, thereby furthering the tenets of, or thereby furthering the attributes of sustainable development. So this you can use, this can be a third point in the necessary precondition for sustainable development. Then the fourth point here, you can talk about the health spending that according to various health ministry and economic survey data, India is currently spending how much on health? 1.15 to 1.5%. Different data is a different point. Means there are different, what do you say? Figures. So you can just give this roundabout figure that 1.15 to 1.5% we are spending. But NHP 2017, what they are saying, what National Health Policy 2017 is saying. So they are saying that India should raise, you can see this point, India should raise public expenditure to 2.5% by 2025. And we have to attain this. And why we have to attain this particular point or this particular fact, but this, this is very important, man. Why? Because even developing countries like Ghana, Thailand, Sri Lanka, China, South Africa, they're spending around two to 4% of GDP on health. And we are spending around this much. This is very less. And if we increase it, it will go a crucial, it will play a crucial role in even improving primary health structure. Because remember the first part of NHP 2017, where they are saying that if you are spending 100 rupees, if government is spending 100 rupees, they should spend 67 or more on primary health structure, two third or more. So more money government is spending on health, more money will be going to the primary health structure, thereby again, furthering the attributes of sustainable development. So all these points you can use here. Then how you will conclude the point means your answer. You have written enough. The points are very good. You will get good marks and you have proper data on health as well. So any question on health, you'll be able to handle it. You should be able to handle it. So now you can end by saying that since health is a state subject, health is a state subject. So only central work will not do. So you need a proper coordination between central and state stakeholders, and that will go a long way in strengthening primary health structure in India, thereby helping in achieving the attributes of both welfare state as well as sustainable development. So that will conclude your answer. Tigasha, that was it for this particular question. In the next part, I will make question number seven. And I want to give proper like time to each question, and that's why I'm making each question separately. Tigasha, take care, be blessed, bye-bye.